I think there are two people, two types of people in the world, right? There's those who grow up and know exactly what they want to be. And then there are human beings. (laughs) Our career is not a linear path. It's a set of mini adventures. Welcome to a new episode of Wish I Knew That Before. I'm your host, Amit Pandey, and here we bring on guests from different walks of life to discuss ideas, answer questions that can directly help a young adult navigate the journey of life a bit better. Our guest for today's show is a professional dabbler. Never heard that term? Neither did I. Until I came across this man. His curiosity has led him to work in many fields like content creation, speech writing, advertising, e-commerce, music production, sound design, screenwriting and much more. His desire to experiment has taken him places. In 2013, he started collaborating with Zach King, the famous digital musician, to do sound design for his videos. Eventually, becoming the creative director at King Studio, writing creative videos which were viewed over 5 billion times writing branded content for Fortune 500 companies such as Apple, Google, Disney and more. He worked with Zach for 8 years, building the brand and growing the channel from 1 million followers to over 100 million worldwide. In January 2021, he quit his dream job to enter his spaghetti season where he claimed to be tossing the ideas at the wall until something sticks and something stuck. His latest endeavor, Project Preneurship. The idea is to come up with low-cost but profitable, quick-to-implement project ideas. The one that he's currently working on is with a mission to get rid the world of boring PowerPoints by helping people add surprise and compelling storytelling to their presentations. So please join me in welcoming the creative powerhouse, the generalist in the specialized world, Mark Somerville, everyone. Wow, you! how did you find all of that? That's great. <laughs> you, I, I had to do some digging, but I think, I think, I think your work speaks for itself, Mark, honestly, like um, every day, right? Like you have this challenge going on where you'll post every day something about the season that you are on, the things that are coming up for you. And right from there itself, it has added you have added personally so much value to my Instagram feed and I have said this so many times that I'm so happy when you said yes to come on this podcast so thank you so much yeah I'm glad those videos have resonated with you (laughs) one thing as I shared in my um, introduction that you have you did quit your dream job not a lot of people do that I want to talk about all of that thing like what came up for you when you quit your job you're in your you were in your spaghetti season you took that chance on yourself i want to talk about those things but before even we go there something that was so interesting personally to me because i see myself relating to that is i have tremendous amount of interest as a person i love to do so many things as jesse itzler would say right building your life resume in your journey as I shared, like you have dabbled into so many things. What wasn't clear for me is that were you trying to find yourself in those things or was it just that, no, I like that. I'm going to follow my curiosity and I'm going to do, go and do it. That's a great question. Was I trying to find myself in all the different things I was dabbling in? There's an element of that, of finding what I'm interested in, what I'm good at. But what I found is that the curiosity of learning a new thing, of diving deep into a new subject is an end in itself. It's not just a means to get to the next thing, to the next job. The actual curiosity of diving into a new subject, of learning something new, of going, like you said, from sound design to music production, to screenwriting, to writing ads, writing videos. A lot of that journey really was finding things I'm curious about because that helps me enter that state of flow. And that is an end in itself is, is being in that state of flow is learning new things is feeling that curiosity be sparked by a new subject. But definitely during that time, there is an element of finding yourself of finding what you're all about. And I actually had to, kind of decouple some of this. And I Mm -hmm. posted a video about this 
yesterday, in fact, about the idea okay. of what you do and who you are are two different things. And it took me a while to to really mm. understand that and really believe it. It sounds obvious. Mm. It's like, you know, yeah. you ask someone, what do you do for a living? And they say, yeah. oh, I'm an accountant. That's obviously yeah. not who they are. There's so much more than that. But yeah. it's really hard to personalize that because what I found is that when you get really good at something, when you get really good at your job, you start to identify as that. You're like, well, I, I, I write videos that are seen by millions of people. There's, there's yeah. some pride that's associated with that. Yeah. But it took a while for me to decouple that. And when I finally mm. realized if I wasn't the person writing these videos that we posted to millions of people, what am I? I'm so much more than that. And yeah. so in a sense, that is part of the discovery process is learning yeah. what I am beyond just what I do each day. And so yeah. that really, that really was a part of my, I, I, I call it my quarter life crisis that I went through <laughs> a couple of years ago. So I don't yeah. want to call it a midlife crisis because I don't want to yeah. admit that I'm halfway through, but <laughs> we'll say it's a quarter life crisis. And part of that was really decoupling what I do from who I, who I am. And, right. and that that's in a sense how I found myself through that process of dabbling. And what came up? What came up for you in that, like, okay, I I do write videos, I write scripts, and I am good at sound design. And when you actually decoupled, what came up for you in that? What came up in that process was finding that we live in a specialized world. We live in a yeah. world where people grow up to be doctors or grow up to be lawyers. And... What I found is that I needed to be okay being the generalist in the specialized mm, world. Yeah. And because I think there are two people, two types of people in the world, right? There's those who grow up and know exactly what they want to be. And yeah. then there are human <laughs> beings. There are the rest of us who really understand that life takes so many different journeys. There, our yeah. career is not a linear path. It's a set of mini adventures. And right. that's really what I had to come and understand in this process is finding out that it's not important that I'm writing videos right now. That's not what I'm going to do the rest of my life. I enjoy yeah. it. I put my all into it, but I'm so much more than that. I'm the relationships around me. I'm the people that are in my life. I'm the yeah. activities that I do outside of work. And yeah. if you can, if you take away the work, what's left, I think that's the, mm. that's ultimately the question that I came to was if you take away yeah. that dream job, which I yeah. did willingly, yeah. what's, yeah. what remains? You said it's so beautifully, the idea of your career is not a long thing, stretch thing that you have to stick to it. There is these mini adventures to it. I think I was just watching um, uh, Human Playground on Netflix. And in one of the episode, the the guy living in Tundra region, they were hunting using the golden eagle. And they were just talking about, oh, this is just a game for us. And he was very old. And he was like, you become old when you start to play, when you stop to play the game. When you start, when you stop to have that joy for life, when you stop to have those adventures. And I think, I think that is so true. That is so true. That so many of us have been told, oh, just settle, no? Find, find one particular thing that you're good at and just, just go and do it. But here you are sitting and telling us that, no, you know what? It's fine. You can view your career as five-year mini-adventure or maybe one year or two years. You decide what do you want to do, right? Exactly. I hear that. And there are yeah. two different forms of curiosity in that. Right. For me, the curiosity is I want to jump to the next thing. I want to try something new. I want to be challenged again at a different level and, right. and experience that learning process. For other yeah. people, like let's say for the doctors or the lawyers, their curiosity goes deep on one thing. So mm. for the doctor, mm. they just they need to find ways to continually be curious and dive right. deep into that. So you either specialize yeah. and your curiosity is focused on that, yeah. or 
you are a general generalist and you're okay bouncing around. And yeah, yeah. once I let myself be okay with that and realize yeah. I'm not just going to become hyper focused on one thing and become really good at that and do that for yeah. the next 30 years and then retire. Once I let go yeah. of that, it became so much more fun because wow. now it's finding what's the next, what's the next adventure. And while yeah. I'm on that adventure, I don't need to put as much pressure on it to say, yeah. well, this is the end all be all. This has to be the thing I do for the next 20 years. Yeah. It's just the adventure right now. And then yeah. finding the next one after that. And I can I can see the joy on your face uh, with this sense of adventure already in you. <laughs> but Doc, it's it's tough, no? It's tough. Like in in this world where so many people around us are talking about oh niche down, go and specialize and like just put your head down and concentrate on one thing. It's tough, no, to actually go ahead and do things where you're not really sure how far you're going to go. The path is not certain. How and I struggle you... with that. Yeah, I would say yeah. that the advice of niche, niching down or uh, they say the nit, the riches are in the, the niches. Ah, uh, niches. <laughs> right? And that's probably true. It, that's yeah. probably true. The yeah. more you niche down there and really focus on one thing. But there's been some hesitancy for me to do that yeah. it, i'll give you an example it's just yeah. it's something as insignificant as your linkedin bio right yeah. you yeah. see people who have a linkedin bio who say i help solo entrepreneurs go from six figures to seven figures through yeah, yeah. writing whatever yeah they have a very specific person they're serving a very specific thing that they do they've got yeah. this writing yeah. framework and in a yeah. sense that's who they are that's who you yeah. see them as, as the world sees them as, but there's so much more than that. I'm sure they could do so right. many more things. And so as something as insignificant as writing my own LinkedIn <laughs> headline, yeah, you have to come to grips with what, who, how are people going to know me? Is yeah. it going to be as this one specific thing? Mm. Like, uh, there's a, there's someone who both of us know who's sort of this LinkedIn expert, this yeah. LinkedIn consultant, they do ghostwriting yeah. and that's, and they've, they've really niched down into that and they, they do a great job at it, yeah. but it's been really hard for me to say, this is what I am. It's hard to put a mm. pin in it and say, this is mm. what I am. This is what I do. And at some point I just had to let go and be like, this is what I am today. I'll change yeah. the, I'll change it tomorrow. <laughs> If it doesn't yeah. feel right, and that's okay. Yeah. Not niching down as as far allows me to be exploratory. Yeah. No, I love that. So, so in a way, you're saying that you're still specialized, but you're a specialized generalist, I would say. You know, because not a lot of uh, people are becoming generalist and like specializing in that. So, I think, I think you are at a very interesting point where you can see the world standing at a fork of like looking at different things and provide that unique perspective in that sense if you think about it maybe yeah it and and i don't have all the answers i'm still processing through right. a lot of it hmm. but my hope is that if anyone listening is considering the long trajectory ahead of them and says, I don't know if I'm on that right path, that right career yeah. path. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully they can get to that same point that I got to, which is yeah. why not say, call it what it is, say, this is the current adventure you're on. And then when a new yeah. adventure presents itself, you can go after that one and it's okay. Yeah. You can switch to different things. Yeah. But where does this confidence comes from, Mark? Because I think, um, does it, like when I was thinking about you, I see that you have taken up this challenge of, you know, as you said, like uh, not niching down, going ahead and trying out things, following your curiosity. Where does this confidence comes from? Is it from because you have dabbled so much and tried out so many different things that now you know that, you know what, I think I will figure out. Something will, I will make things happen. Or is it like, you're you're walking in faith. I think something that we talked about that your strength comes from 
believing in God, walking in faith? What is it? Where does this confidence comes from? I would say it comes from a lot of different things. Uh, one very practical way that the confidence comes from is that I've planned for this time. My uh. wife and I have planned for this time. We we knew this was coming, and having having a plan, the practical yeah. side of it allows yeah. you to be confident and explore. The idea that, what is it, nine months? Or it's been about 10 months since I left my yeah. job. The idea yeah. that yeah. I would find that next thing within 10 months, I've, I've, given my, I've given that up and just saying, it might take longer than that. And that's okay. What I've, also, what I've already discovered is that this season has been so enriching already. Yeah, yeah. That it's worth it. Now it comes with the practical sides. How do I yes. pay the bills? How do I do exactly. all of that? That's a very exactly. important piece of it. And we can get into that if you want to. Absolutely. That's, Let's actually yeah. get into that because that is something I wanted to ask you. Like few people decide, you know what? I'm just irritated in this job. I'm going to quit and they quit and they don't have any plan and they like jump right into it. I am. I come from that place where even I am in this phase of my life that somewhere down the line, one, one and a half years, I'm looking to transition. And I am planning for it from right now, building that uh, nest egg for me, taking care of my finances. But that's that's me. How was it for you in that journey? Yeah, there was a lot of planning that went into it. So yeah. what I found is that the numbers don't lie. The math doesn't lie. If you do yeah. the math ahead of time and you 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 figure out how long your runway is, then yeah. you have a lot of confidence. You have a lot right. of freedom. Right. If you never mm. do the math, if you never define yeah. how long your runway is to follow this new dream, then yeah. you're always worried. You're like, yeah. well, I gotta I gotta make more money this month. I've gotta I've gotta do that. And I will say that I recognize that not everyone has the opportunity to just quit their job and and explore for many months that right. I recognize is a, is a position of, of privilege and being able to do that. And so I, I take advantage of that. I want to, I want to yeah. make the best out of that. Right. And so I recognize that's not in the cards for everyone, but I will say that what I found, what I wish I knew earlier yeah, is that you can get a job. You have skills, right. like you have, so many skills that you could go get a job with yes. quitting your job right now doesn't mean you'll be unemployed for the rest of your life you could leave your exactly. job right now <laughs> and you could go ex try some some new adventure for six months and if yeah. that doesn't work you could find another job and you'll be okay the job uh, comes back and yeah. there's a there's a quote by um uh, it's Brian Dyson, the I think he's the former CEO of, of Coca-Cola. And I actually have it here. He says, imagine life is a game in which you're juggling five balls in the air. You mm. name them work, family, mm. health, mm. friends, and spirit. Mm. And you're keeping okay. all of these in the air. Dang. You will soon understand that work is a rubber ball. If you drop it, it will bounce back. But the other four balls, family, health, friends, and spirit, are made of glass. If right. you drop one of these, they will be irrevocably scuffed, marked, nicked, damaged, or even shattered. They will mm. never be the same. You must understand that and strive for balance in your life. So I love mm. that quote because you realize that work is that rubber, rubber ball. Right. And so many of us right. treat it like the glass ball where yeah. we have to carefully protect it. We put all of the other things aside to make sure our career trajectory is on the right path. But yeah. it's a rubber ball. If you want to leave the job right now and go try something else, you can yeah. come back to it later. You could find it. You you won't find the same job necessarily, but you could find a job. Oh, absolutely. That's, that's such a beautiful quote. Like, uh, wow. Wow. It yeah, it helps so with work-life balance. It, it, it makes you think which balls are the actual glass ones and which ones can you, can you mess around with a little bit. Can you mess around with a little bit? And I think 
when I talk to my mom and dad as well, right? I'm talking to them about this transition. Um, and a lot of times Sarah Blakely has actually said that like, when you have an idea, don't share it with a lot of people because <laughs> they're... <laughs> because <laughs> they're going to project their fears on it but i have been talking to my mom and dad about it and um, for them i think i think i never blame them from the place that they come from because for them at their in their life survival was supreme you know for us a lot of our essentials have been taken care of maslow's hierarchy as they say is like fulfilled for us so now we talk about finding purpose in our life thinking about okay uh, i want to do something meaningful in my life right um and as you said i think this idea also that um like the work if you leave it or if you transition if you experiment this idea of play and experimentation is just like you know removed from our studies and things like no just go and find a safe route stick to it and just so i think i think for a lot of us um we are not ready to experiment or play around as you said like have that confidence also in yourself that you have worked you have built that skill that six months down the line if it not if it doesn't work you might find the job again this idea of no if i transition what will i say on my resume what did i do for 6 months i will be unhireable what would you say to to someone who is thinking from that perspective i think the people who are hiring now have changed their tune on that they see so mm. many people who take experimentation take new adventures and they see that as a benefit at least they yeah. should in in places that hire excellent people and that yeah. that train them well that manage them well they should put a premium on people who have different life experience uh, and if mm. you if everyone comes through the same track the same track yeah. to get to where you need to to be to, to land that role at that company then you're right. just going to get a lot of the same people but if you right. have someone who's come at it from maybe they took 5 years and they worked on a little farm in France and Yeah. It was paid just enough to to live out there and they were able to explore a new culture that yeah. person will bring a totally different skill set and approach yeah. to the work and so mm. i think we're finding that people who are hiring are going to value that more they're going to value yeah. that personal brand that's built hmm. Hmm. that personal brand can be built in your exploration and you're building right. it by getting new experiences you're building you're building it sometimes even just by writing and by showing uh, people that you you think differently and yes. so i think it's i think it's okay that you you do that if if someone's not going to hire you because you took 6 months off yeah. i wouldn't say that's the right job then that they're probably not the right Absolutely. the right person to be hiring you absolutely i think you hit a beautiful note over there that a lot of times we value ourselves through the lens of the employer or other people but you know what take a step back if you can if you can afford it i think we touched upon that like if if you can afford it take a step back and see can you value yourself can you value your curiosity because if someone is not hiring you for who you are in terms of what you bring and you know your value maybe you can say you know what that's not the place for me it wouldn't have worked out anyways you know so yeah having that said, having yeah. that um that freedom of choice is a big yeah. is a big luxury to be able yeah. to say i don't want to work that job i want to be able to find a job that has that fulfills me on a on a deeper level right but so many of the people who run in our circles do have that luxury they don't think they don't have, have that they think absolutely they think absolutely. that well i've just i got to get i got to get the job that that makes yeah. sense for my career path but yeah. they do have that luxury to to step back and say which job is actually actually contains work that's meaningful to me yeah and contains work that will give me life yeah yeah no no absolutely i think um recognizing that privilege as well is so important so so as you said like in in your journey as well you made a plan can you actually share some insights into sure. that 
Yeah. yeah. So let's let's talk about I I call it the practical side of chasing your yeah. dreams because you Perfect. have to you have to have the practicals down. So for me, yes. what was really helpful was number one, defining my runway. So runway right. is how many months can I go without a salary? Right. So right. I planned ahead for this. Hmm. And my wife and I set set a goal and we said, well, there's this time period where I'll, I'll just give you the practicals of it. We we said, yeah. let's let's give this a year. Wow. Let's let's okay. go after this for a year. Now my wife, she works a job full right. time. So that right. is a that's an incredible incredible uh, piece of the puzzle. But still, we said this. Let's give this a year and see where we're at after that. And I know that right. during that year, I don't have to find a way to make money yet. It's going to be important at some point Absolutely. to do that. It's going to yeah, be very important. Absolutely. But what I found was it was sort of a mental shift. I realized what I need to go after is not a salary goal at the end. My mm. goal is not to say, okay, I need to replace my salary. It's to reach a monthly recurring revenue goal. It's so much right. easier. So instead of saying I need to make, let's do round numbers. Let's say I need to make $60,000 a year. Right. That's a really daunting number. But if we say, Absolutely. how can we, how can we make $5,000 this next mm. month? Mm. And how can we mm. make that recurring? Is it mm. re recurring clients? Is it um, a product that has recurring revenue? It's a lot mm. easier to say, well, may, at the end of those 12 months, let's try to just get a recurring revenue goal. Right. And that right. to me was a big realization for me because it took that daunting number down from 60,000 down to 5,000 yeah. 5, saying, 000. okay, that's, that's doable. We can figure yeah. that out. Yeah. So that's yeah. the, that's kind of the financial side of it was hmm. really doing the math saying, this is how much right. our expenses are. Yeah. This is how much we've put aside, how much we've yeah. saved up and really how much of that we want to spend. I, yeah. I think there's a there's definitely a level of prudence in here where you don't just want to say, well, I'm gonna spend my life savings for the next twelve yeah. months. That's not yeah. what we're doing. Yeah. We mm. our savings are something different. This is a separate idea right. of of living expenses. This is how long we're we're willing to take a cut on our on on some of our, our on some of our living expenses so that we can Absolutely. actually endure this time. Yeah. And yeah. once you set that up, it gives you a lot of freedom. Now right. you need to make some other decisions. And so the next yeah. decision that I had to make was defining when I'm going to work. So mm. it's one thing to say, I'm going to quit my job and go on this exploratory period. But right. it's another thing to say, I'm going to work when Jamie's working. Jamie's my wife. And yeah. I'm going to work just about normal business hours. That's when I'm going mm. that's the the type of schedule that I'm going to put into it. Whether or not yeah. I have work that has to be done that day, I'm going to yeah. still put in those normal business hours because yeah. that's that felt like a good schedule for me. I've done that before. I know how to do that. Do I take yeah. time off? Sure. Yeah. If, if I want to yeah. go do something else, uh, that's fine too. But in reality, yeah. this challenge of figuring out the next thing and figuring out something that eventually pays the bills yeah. has really captivated me. I thought yeah. that when I quit my job, I was going to take a month or two and just, I was going to go surfing. I was going to do some <laughs> writing. I was going to go on hikes. I was going to go on these trips. Yeah. Day one, I was in front of my computer and I was like, let's figure this out. This is a great challenge. And so it wasn't out of obligation. I wasn't like, oh, I have to be in front of my computer. I have to be figuring okay. this out. Okay. The right. challenge was set. I know that I need to figure this out at some point. I need yeah. to figure out something that uh, for the listeners out there, when I say figure it out, I'm saying I'm trying to start my own business, something that I have ownership of, something that uh, allows yeah. me to have the freedom that I want to. And like Amit said in the intro, Part of that is this <laughs> idea of projectpreneurship, which is yeah. launching different low cost projects and seeing which ones yeah. catch on. So I'm yeah. working on a digital product right now. I do things like consulting. I'm figuring out where I really find joy in with the products yeah. I'm creating. And I'm learning along the way. A lot of this is yeah. are, a lot of these 
things require new skills that I did not have before this. And that's part of the fun of it. So defining when you're going to work is the next, is the next piece of it. Is the next. And then a really important piece for me was defining what I'm actually looking for. So what is, Mm. what am I trying to build? Because Mm. there's a, there's a great quote from a book called the E-Myth Revisited. The Mm E-Myth Revisited uh, by Michael Gerber, I think. He says, so many people who start, who go down the entrepreneurial path, they end up, they don't own a business, they own a job. And the idea is, I don't want to just, I I don't just want to own a job. That is not interesting to me. Owning a business is different than owning a job. And so many of us glorify this entrepreneurship and say, well, you know, I can be a freelancer, I can... Um, I can discover these new these new products that I create, but at the end of the day, you might just create a job that doesn't enrich your life. So, so what's it comes the back to what's the difference between two? owning a business is owning something that enriches your life in a mm. way that leads towards your primary aim of your life. This is this is from that book. Mm. So you define the mm. primary mm. The primary aim of your life how you want to be yeah. spending your time, what what you think that purpose is for you, making sure that w- the business you create, the primary objective of that fulfills the primary yeah. aim and is not something different. It's not like a year down the road, you've created a job that you're working 12 hour days and you're just as yeah. miserable yeah. as you were working for someone else. Because someone so else, often right. we are, when we start a new business, we come at it from the side of being a technician. We do what yeah. we know how to do. We do. Yeah. If you if you bake pies, that's your tech. That's your technical skill. So you're baking pies, yes. and what you've ended yeah. up creating is just another pie baking job. And mm. so that's the difference. Instead of owning a pie shop and really yeah. expanding that and figuring out, okay, well, how do we serve our customers better as a pie shop? What you've ended up, if you're not careful, you end up creating a job, which is I bake pies job, for 12 yeah. hours a day. And then for the remaining mm. hours, I need to figure out how to sell those pies. But but initially, you have to do that. No, or no, like, you do. You do. Because obviously, a lot yes, of people, you need to yeah, be the technician. Yeah. There are three different, um, three different people who run who run the business. There's the entrepreneur, yeah. the manager and the technician. And mm, this is okay. you have to be all three of those. And I'm, I got to yeah. give credit to where credit is due. This is from the E-Myth Revisited. It's a great book for anyone yeah. who's trying to, who, who's thinking about starting their own thing. Um, I found that to be yeah. a really good book that I wish I read earlier. So yeah. what I wish yeah. I knew is to, to start reading books like that earlier. <laughs> so yeah. defining what you're looking for is really important to me. And so what I, mm. what I defined was I want to decouple dollars from hours. So I don't want it to be hmm. like I'm I need to spend an hour to make a dollar. Hmm. So decoupling dollars from hours, how do you do that? You do that with something hmm. like making a product that can sell in your hmm. sleep. Making yeah. yeah. Uh if you do make a service, it would have to be delegating that service to someone else who can fulfill it so that it's not yeah. me who always has to spend an hour to make a dollar. Yeah. So yeah. that's one of the goals for me is to decouple dollars from hours. Another yeah. goal was to allow, to have it work during my sleep. That's mm. just an idea of being able to earn in my sleep mm. is a concept mm. that comes down to being international, making a product Absolutely. that someone can get through the internet. I just yeah. love the potential that's there with just a laptop at your fingertips. You can create so yeah. many things and you can sell it to so yeah. many different people and thus improve their life. So yeah. that's really what I was looking for was this idea of decoupling dollars from hours and allowing yeah. it to work in my sleep. Have I found that? No, I'll be honest. I have not found that yet, but the journey has been so enriching And I'm confident that I can find that, that I keep going. And that's part of it. It's this, the, the little taste that I've gotten out of it, out of, out of doing this for 10 months has only reinforced the decision that it was a good one. It was a good decision to do this, whether or not I, I found my next thing right away. That's a, that's irrelevant. It's already been enriching to my life. And I think more people would find that if they took the leap yeah. that 
it's yeah. it's a, it can really be an enriching time where you find out more about yourself. And yeah. as long as you have the practicals in place, you say, this is how long I'm going to do this. This is huh. when I'm going to work. This is what I'm looking for, what I'm going after. Huh. And then another, another component that I like to think about is design your life from the beginning. So Hmm. What that, what I mean is don't work 100 hour weeks now and expect that you're going to yeah. work four hour weeks later. Work. Ah. Hmm. It, there's a saying, and I disagree with this saying, but people say work like no one today so you can live like no one tomorrow. And yeah. it glorifies yeah. this idea of just grind, grind, grind right now. And in the yeah. future, it will all be worth it. And some yeah. people do that to great success. Yeah. But what I found is it's more important to me to design a, a, a healthier life from the beginning. Maybe it means yeah. I have less growth at the start, but yeah, I think it's naive to imagine that all of a sudden you'll be able to change from working hundred hour weeks to four hour <laughs> weeks. It's just not going to happen. You're going to be, you're going to get even more work and you're going to be even more stressed. I would say work like you want to today to live like you yeah. want to tomorrow. It's, it's, you've got to, you've got to plan for it now. It's, it's naive to assume you'll change. Because it, it also becomes a part of, as you said, like, I think also it becomes a part of who you are and it becomes difficult to decouple it later because how much you work defines who you are and you associate your with it and you build habits around it and later you cannot just sit back and say that okay you know what i have enough well to go and work for four hours no you think about it and slowly and steadily you make that work and that's the thing right like you also get more time to design like it's not like today i'm gonna hustle 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 for 100 hours but you haven't really put in the thought, how will I make this four hours? But as compared to someone who has right from the start, he he knew. Like I think I think the component over there also, Marcus, you are defining what success means to you. I think that's the core component over there, because for a person who just wants to make more money, uh, will never know what's enough. But you are defining. You know what? this is going to be enough for me. I'm not going to associate myself with my productivity. I work 100 hours. That's that's who I am and I have to hustle hard. No, you are defining things according to your own goals, your own lifestyle. And I think that brings, that in itself brings so much freedom. The question of how much is enough hmm. is a really important hmm. question to deal right. with. I was, so how someone asked me that, that? Yeah. Just, yeah. just a week ago. They said, how much is enough? And the way that they answered it first was if I had a house and then maybe a vacation home, like that would be mm. enough. That's the level of wealth that they wanted. Right. And, and everyone has to answer that question for themselves. Yeah. And to me, my, my response to that was, it's not a dollar value. It's not a certain mm. amount that I need to make. What mm. is more important to me is the lifestyle. The is how much is enough is having hmm. enough resources, enough work to do that allows me to wake up each day feeling challenged with hmm. some sort of creative challenge to face and uh, that allows yeah. me to express my creativity and allows right. me to spend time with people who me are meaningful to me. And that to me is enough. What does it look like having a primary house and a vacation house? Yeah. I don't, I don't think so. I think you can do it with a lot less than that. With yeah. a lot less, you can have that freedom to have the lifestyle that at least I defined for myself. Absolutely. Absolutely. As you said that. Um, have you thought about how thing, much is enough for you? I think for me right now, the phase of life that I am in, I haven't really given it a thought like how much is enough for me, but something that has brought immense joy in my life uh, is following my curiosity absolutely i think right now this podcast is not making any money for me a lot of people would be like how are you going to like when are you going to monetize i'm like no i think i think for me this is just bringing joy to chat with amazing people that i never would have gotten a chance to sit down and actually ask them some great questions some meaningful questions have a meaningful chat 
my curiosity has led me to places i think i am the most authentic when i'm leading my life by following my curiosity and i think in my life as well people ask me where the confidence comes from i think the confidence a lot of things that i do comes from i'm just following my curiosity i don't expect things to work out i ran a 20 kilometers uh, uh, on sunday my knees were busted from five days hike in august it was like when french people say it's a technical hike it is a technical hike <laughs> i th- i thought i thought i did 29 or 29 it would be fine <laughs> you were wrong one month when yeah, i was wrong my knees were busted and uh, i ran the 20 kilometers just the other day i didn't know i was going to complete or not i didn't know but i was very curious about the conversations that would happen for me at 5 kilometers at 10 kilometers at 15 and 20 now a lot of people would say hey if you're going out there just give your best like go for it I think for me it's the joy is is in the conversations you know some day I might run for speed some day I might run for time that's fine but I, that that needs to come from within I'm not going to follow someone else's time to define m- the timeline of my life you know so I think I struggle the most when I try to follow someone else's timeline and I just flow through life beautifully when i'm following my curiosity so right now i think following my curiosity is really enough for me because i know i'll figure it out whatever comes if i'm authentic if i'm true to myself i have worked on my skills enough that i will make it work you know if i'm being if i'm doing that so i think um yeah and every time you follow your curiosity you're going to add new skills to your skill set. Exactly. You're going to exactly. build up this toolbox of all these different yeah. skills that you learn and knowledge that you gain and yeah. it will make you a more well-rounded generalist to Absolutely. to tackle problems that you face whether in your work life or even in your personal life, you'll yeah. have more tools to to face it with. Yeah. And that's the yeah. joy of being a generalist and finding yeah. that that curiosity, following it just for curiosity's sake hmm. but hmm. knowing that you're probably going to get something out of it you're probably going to gain a new skill yeah. you're going to learn something but that's not the end goal the end goal really is to it, curiosity i believe is an end in itself it's part of what gives us joy and makes it Absolutely. interesting to yeah. dive into new subjects and part of what it means to save her life so yeah uh, i think curiosity wow. is is worth it Absolutely. But one thing that's coming up for me Mark is a lot of times we we decide that this is how it's going to work. We have a plan. But we all know a lot of our plans can get thrown right out of the park when we actually try to do it, right? You said your confidence comes from the plan that you made. But in real life, what were the challenges that you faced in these many months that you quit that you didn't really think of or like what was the struggle during this phase sure one of the biggest foes that i face on this journey is that lack of focus i can focus on a task i can work on something but what i mean uh. by focus is this one step higher it's finding this shiny object that sounds uh. like a more interesting project that i should go work <laughs> on right now i have shiny object syndrome so often Same. i'm working on something i'm like this is this is it i've got to i've got to focus yes. on this for a month to really get it off mm. the ground but 2 mm. weeks into it without fail another idea pops into my head and i'm like that sounds yeah. so much more interesting right now yeah. but yeah. what i've realized about shiny object syndrome is that it's totally rational because yeah. when you're working on a project those early days of a project are all possibility you yeah. you are exploring these the nooks and crannies of this project and you're finding yeah. oh i could go this way oh i could go that way and then you get 2 yeah. weeks into it and you're facing reality reality yeah. sets in and you realize well i've got to do this on budget i've got to do this on time Yeah, I don't know yeah. how to do that so I'm not actually going to be able to do that pull off that crazy idea that I came up with. And yeah. as soon as you as, as soon as reality sets in on a project, yeah, yeah, 
any other project sounds better at that time. <laughs> any other project sounds like a sh- yeah, looks yeah, like a shiny yeah. object because yeah. it doesn't have all the challenges and all the real decisions there. that there. you're going to face. But you have to yeah. realize that that same shiny object will reach the same phase in the project where yes. it also has challenges and you've got to yes. face them. And then the next shiny object shows up. So that's yeah. been a really big challenge for me is. And how are you try, answering that? Trying yeah. to get over shiny object syndrome. Part of that is setting deadlines, setting deadlines for mm. my projects and saying, this is when I'm going to launch it. Mm. And once I set that deadline, I tend to announce it publicly before right. I even know how I'm going to execute it. But as soon yeah. as there's that public pressure of, hey, I'm releasing this slide pack on this day. Now I know yeah. I've got to do everything it, everything that I can to release yeah. that on time. And yeah. I know that after that, I can have a reflection period and think about, okay, how did that project go? And hmm. then I have the opportunity to chase the next shiny object if it yeah. makes sense at yeah. that point. Yeah, absolutely. But give, giving yeah. myself a defined time period, I know more shiny objects will come in the future and I can I can entertain those ideas later. But right yeah. now I've got a deadline. So that's how yeah. I've tried to tried to yeah. overcome it. But it's a challenge. That's it is a challenge. I think I think I relate to it so much. A lot of people when they think that, oh, I quit my job, now I am my own boss. I can make my own decisions. But they fail to realize that there is beauty in also showing up as a professional. When your boss ask you that I want the presentation, you make it happen. But we promise ourselves every day that I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. But a lot of times we go back and forth on that. And and I get that. Like, I think you brought it up beautifully in one of your videos. It's like consistency doesn't look like it has to be perfect on all days. So can you just talk right. a little bit about that? Yeah, consistency has been a huge part of, of my journey is, like you said, posting a video every single day. And that has had numerous benefits. One of them is yeah. just seeing the creative process through each day is a benefit in mm. itself. I'd love to do that. The other thing that's been really helpful for me about that practice is it allows me to solidify some of my thoughts. It's, it's yeah. an act of writing. And writing yeah. is something I wish I knew before, which is <laughs> I wish I did it earlier. Writing yeah. clarifies your thoughts. Yeah. It's not the other way around. You don't have to think perfectly to start writing. You need to write first to start thinking even better, yeah. even more clearly. And yeah. I wish I did that earlier. And so this act of posting each day, this consistency is a sense. It's me writing. It's, it's my daily video journal in a way. Yeah. And it's allowing yeah. me to explore new ideas, to articulate yeah. them in different ways and to figure out which ones are resonating with other people. So yeah. that's, that's been part of the benefit of that process. But I want to go back to one thing that you, you were just saying about the value. There's value in being a, a professional too, in, in a working professional. Absolutely. Mm. Not mm. everyone needs to have their own business. Not everyone needs yeah. to be an entrepreneur. It's not yeah. better than being a working professional. It's a different mm. thing. You could yeah. be, there's so much value in being a working professional and having other people do the different parts of the, of the process, right? Just yes. because you're good at one part of the process, just because you're that yeah. technician doesn't mean you're a good manager, doesn't mean you're a good entrepreneur. The three pieces yeah. that need to come together. Just yeah. because you're good at baking pies doesn't mean you're good at marketing yeah. them, selling them, hiring Absolutely. the other people yeah. to work in the kitchen. So yeah. there's so much value. And there's even a lot of security in being, in being a working professional. Because you yeah. have other people who have your back there. You have other people right. who are doing the pieces of the process that you don't even have to think about. Right. So this new journey for me, my spaghetti season, yeah, it's not that it's better than working a job. I loved the job that I worked at. It felt yeah. like it was the right step for me. It's the right next Absolutely. adventure for me. Yeah. And for yeah. other people, entrepreneurship might not be the thing for them. Right. But I felt right. like I got to the point where the opportunity cost 
yeah. of, of not taking this bet yes. became greater than the paycheck. Yeah. So at some point, you have to, you have to do that calculus in your head. What is the opportunity yeah. cost of me not going after this, this dream that I have? Yeah. And, yeah. and planning ahead for it, setting up the runway, setting up the goals. But once that opportunity costs, yeah. once, it, once it tips the other way and you're like, I have to go after this now, yeah. that's when you make a change. And, and that's what, what happened to me. What was the opportunity cost for you? The opportunity cost was, it came back to this conversation I had with, with uh, my brother. We were sitting in his yeah. dining room and yeah. my nephew and nieces were running around behind him, screaming, having fun. Yeah. And yeah. we're talking about this idea of what if I, what if I quit my job? What if I yeah. went after some of my own ideas, pl placed a bet on some of my own ideas. And how and far was this back? before you actually took the decision to quit. Yeah. So this was this was about six months before Okay. No, this was three months before I before I I let Zach know. Right. Uh, right. Right. And so we're we're sitting at the table. Yeah. And he says he says, look at me. Like mm -hmm. I have four amazing kids. I've got a house that I'm paying a mortgage on. We're a single family income. It's yeah. not in the cards for me to do something like that, right. but it is for you. Hmm. It's in the cards for you right now. Hmm. And so if you wait too long, it becomes harder and harder to take that kind of leap. And he, hmm. and by saying that for him, he's not saying he regrets anything about his current situation. He has a love, lovely family, but yeah. he's just saying the reality of it. When you have hmm. more responsibility, it's harder to make these kinds of changes. So Absolutely. any sort of young adults listening to this, if yeah. you don't have a mortgage, you don't have kids, you don't have this, maybe this, maybe you, you don't have a mound of student debt at this point. Yeah. Yeah. It's, there's never a better time to start betting yeah. on some of your own ideas and on some of your own dreams. It yeah. only becomes harder. It doesn't become impossible. And I'm, I yeah. want to be able to prove that just. Yeah. You know, someday if if we have a family and we have a mortgage and we have a house, I want to be able to prove <laughs> that you can still go after your dreams. That's not the yeah. killer of dreams. Yeah. <laughs> and that is fascinating. You know, through your journey, you're sharing your struggles, you're documenting, you're not creating. I would say you're not just creating content, you're documenting your journey. And I think there is so much value when people document their journey because it's not just the best thing. It's not just the best life advice. No, no, no. It is the ebbs and the flows that you're showing, the struggles, the ups and the downs and that makes your journey so human, I would say, you know. I'm glad that's Before come I, through because yeah. it definitely has yeah. had its ebbs and flows. And yeah. so anyone who's who's listening to this, who, who wants to see some of that raw... Yeah. The ups and downs of the journey, uh, they can watch them there. I don't have the most amazing life advice, but I'll at least yeah. tell you what I'm thinking about and what I'm processing through. And and that's all I can that's all I can do. I I can't come yeah. from a point of saying that I figured it all out, but I enjoy yeah. the act of writing, creating a video and sharing that with someone yeah. who it could help. Yeah. I think nobody has figured it out. Everyone is doing their best guess. And I think whether it's important to just think from that perspective as well and keep guessing, you know, keep keep going ahead, keep trotting ahead. Mark, before um, I uh, ask my last question, uh, is there something that uh, we haven't touched upon and you really want to share any topic that is coming up for you? Yeah, there's one there's one idea that I want to bring up because I think it would be helpful for for some of the listeners of this uh, yeah. the, that young adult. Now, there's a song by Nancy Sinatra, and it was written right. by John Barry and Leslie Bricussi, if I got yeah. that name right. But it's called You Only Live Twice. Okay. Mm. You only live mm. twice. And, and that this is the song from that famous James Bond movie, but here's okay. the opening line. It says you only live twice or so it mm. seems one mm. life for yourself and one for your dreams. So for me, 
this idea of we have the life that we're living right now and then we have this life of our dreams this yeah. and our dreams can look like a bunch of different things it can say it could be for me i've had this idea of uh, what would it be like to live on on the fjords of norway working on a farm right yeah. i will probably never yeah. have that life yeah. but it's one yeah. of it's it's the life of my dreams living. right it's it's <laughs> it's up there and so this idea of the unlived life is really interesting to me we have the life that mm. we live and we have the life that we haven't lived but it's in our dreams mm. and what i've found is that it's so much easier to just stay on the life that you're in and stay on mm. the lane that you're in, whether it's the career that you're in, maybe it's the relationship mm. that you're in mm. and just moving mm. straight on that path. That is the easy path. But yeah. I think so many of us have this active imagination where it's like, what yeah. is life like on the fjords of Norway, on, yeah. working on a small farm in a small town where life is simpler mm. and it that's one of them for me there's lots of them you know what is what is life like in living in london that sounds really interesting yeah. to me yeah. and yeah. so the question is when do you go after one of those lives of your dreams and when mm. do you stay on the life that you're on and when i said earlier our career is not a linear path i think it's a it's yeah. an opportunity for many adventures yeah. what i've realized is it's it might seem sound scary right now to go after one of those lives of your dreams. Yeah. But once you take the leap, you really find that it's not so bad. It's not so scary. You have yeah. people around you. You have the runway that you've set up. You have the plan that you've put in place. And yeah. so why wouldn't you go after it? I just... I keep thinking about that concept of the unlived life, the life of your dreams. And... Yeah. To me, I feel like it's really where so much of our creativity is. So much of, yeah. you, you know, kids are so creative, right? We all agree that. They, they, they create things that are so out of this world that we're just like, how did yeah. you even think of that? And then at some yeah. point, you feel like, wait, I'm no longer that creative person anymore, whether yeah. it was school or yeah. something that, that took it out of me. I think that creativity is just redirected. It's redirected yeah. toward this life of our dreams, dreaming yeah. like, oh, what would life be like living in a penthouse apartment in New York City, right? It's these fantasies. It's these <laughs> ideas of what life could be like. And yeah. what I've realized is you can, you can go after some of those. You're not going to find mm. all of them. And they're not yeah. always going to be great. The grass is yeah. not always greener on the other side. But yeah. going after at least one of them, it yeah. just you've got to be able to just take that leap put yeah. a put a put a plan in put a plan in place <laughs> and take that leap and you'll find yeah. that it's not so bad wow wow that's so beautifully that's so beautifully said thank you for you coming should... to my public therapy session exactly <laughs> i i'm healed right now <laughs> <laughs> no i was saying for me <clears throat> oh okay <clears throat> <laughs> no, that's that's. I so hope some of that. Uh, I hope some of that can can help you think about it too, because absolutely. I think it's I been, think uh, it's been helpful is, for me. This is a selfish reason I do podcast. I say that oh, this is for young adult, but I am a young adult going through this life. <laughs> I am I am getting enriched by this conversation, so it is at least helping one young adult right yeah. now. Mark, where's the best place people can connect with you and follow your work? The best place people can connect would be TikTok and Instagram. They can find my yeah. videos there, yeah. and as if they want to join in on the journey and and see what yeah. i'm thinking about what i'm what i'm creating about some some of the videos have a little humor in them some of them have yeah. some life wisdom that i'm trying to work through so yeah. it's kind of a, a wide variety i'm dabbling yeah. in a lot of different things so that's the place that they could find me if i give you a megaphone and you could shout out a message a lesson that you know now but you wish you knew that before what would it be? Your career, your life is not a linear path. It can be a set of mini adventures. It is not a linear path, guys. Wow. I think I think the excitement, the the sense of oh, I'm looking forward to this 
for this interview was quite a lot because from almost 8 months or so since since mark started creating the videos and i was so excited that if i can get mark on this show and i go deep into these the mini videos that he creates on insta his struggles his phase the the phase that he is in just watching that just observing it adds so much value to my thoughts to it just makes me feel that i'm not alone there's someone else as well who is on this journey of figuring things out he doesn't have all the answers he's not the guru mark you have been enriching my feed of instagram and my life thank you thank you so much for that this has been a beautiful beautiful conversation um thank you so much for coming in thanks amit yeah i appreciate it for everyone listening out there you were listening to wish i knew that before this is amit pandey see you next time